dear viewers welcome to another episode of uh, the higher education board's edifying series uh, my name is mazahir and uh, in this episode we're going to talk about making a successful university application um, choosing a university and applying to university is a stressful time for many students and it is important uh, to do uh, a good background research on the university that you want to apply to. So there's a couple of factors that I would recommend students to take into account when researching the university that they want to apply to. Uh, first and foremost, I would tell students to always look at the destination country that they are thinking of applying to. <clears throat> so first of all, if you're looking at Canada or the UK, um, uh, Australia, Malaysia, wherever you're looking to go and study, it is important to understand the host uh, country's education education system to be able to understand how universities and higher education institutions work uh, in that country. Once you have uh, had a basic understanding of the education system, it's important to identify good quality high quality universities and higher education institutions in that country um, and therefore one of the most important things that I suggest students look at is university rankings. Um, university rankings uh, obviously provide a good picture on the uh, uh, academic ability and academic integrity of a university. Once you have identified a number of universities, obviously we always tell students to look at the course availability. Not every university offers every course and some universities are more specialized in certain courses compared to others so it's very important to identify the university that has the right course for you and also comparing the course content rather than just the title of the course that is available uh, so these, these are some of the important factors that go into researching uh, uh, the background of the university that you want to apply to. Uh, the other very important factor that comes into play during your research phase is obviously the cost implications. How much is the university going to cost you per year? How long will you have to study for? What are the living expenses and so on and so forth. We also need to take into account what are the visa requirements. Certain countries have extremely stringent visa requirements such as requirements for bank statements police clearance certificates etc once you have a general understanding of the universities that we want to apply to the the recommended number of universities that any student should apply to should be at least five to seven universities and uh, not less the reason for that is it's always advisable for students to keep their options open rather than uh, just applying to one or two universities because in case you don't get accepted you have to start over afresh so the, the, the number of applications you make entirely depends on the student and again every country has each uh, a unique application system. What we want to discuss next is what are the requirements to prepare for a university application. So obviously there are many requirements for applying to university and it is important to prepare these documents. A lot of universities actually can accept you based on conditional admissions. That means you can start your application process before receiving your final results. How do you do that? Very easy, all you do is apply with your predicted results. So most universities are able to issue a conditional admissions based on your predicted results. So that is one of the very important documents that is required during university applications, especially if your results have not been released yet. Obviously, we will also need your academics, your prior academics. So if you have done your IGCSE or your O-Levels or your MYP, um, your, your DP1, your AS, any academic documents that you may have that may help to make your application to the university successful. It is very important when we talk about academics to look at what the university requirements are as some universities might offer a similar course but with more stringent academic requirements due to the academic rigor of the course. So that is the other thing. Uh, but obviously in addition to your uh, academics and your predicted grades, you also need a recommendation or reference letter. Most universities do ask for a academic reference from one of your teachers who has taught you. Some universities ask for one, some ask for two. So uh, academic reference letter is a very important document for your application. 
Most universities also ask for a personal statement or a motivation letter or a statement of purpose. What is motivating you to study this course? What is motivating you to study at this university? Why, do you, why should the university accept you as an applicant? What is driving you? The university needs to know what is pushing you uh, to, to achieve and, and soar higher than where you are from now. So a personal statement is also very important. There are certain courses which may have additional requirements so certain courses, for example, if they are relating to art, design, architecture, fashion, they might require you to submit a portfolio, which are pieces of artworks that will show uh, your artistic capabilities. However, other universities might ask for you to go for an interview because they need to assess your uh, uh, emotional quotient and, in, and IQ as well to see your conversational skills, your confidence skills, etc. So this can come under additional requirements. Now this is still in the preparation stage. Once you have prepared everything that is required, the next step is now to apply to universities. University applications are usually done either on a centralized basis or on a direct basis. Certain universities, for example, in the UK go through a centralized process of UCAS. Or in Canada, in Ontario, you have the OUAC centralized application system. However, other universities prefer a direct application method where you apply directly. Certain universities can accept both methods of application. If you prefer to apply through a centralized system or a direct system, they may be able to accept both. So it is important to know which application system is followed by the university. Certain universities might charge application fees for doing the application, others might not have any application fees. So if your university requires an application fee, it is important for you to have access to a Visa or MasterCard, debit card or credit card in order to pay the various application fees electronically. Once you have all this ready, all the information is ready, all the resources and documents required are ready, now you can begin filling the university application forms. At this stage, I urge you to be very, very considerate to the minute details, how you answer questions that are on the application form uh, regarding your personal information, the course that you have selected, all of those usually have to be filled out on the application form. Once you have done that, you can compile your application and submit it to the university. Universities take between two weeks and some take up to two months to actually respond back to you. And therefore, the Higher Education Board urges students to start university applications as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and happy university hunting.